Hi there, my name is Julia Iafredi, and this presentation is entitled 13 Years, A Foreign Doctor's Fight to Stay. I have been an attending physician at Columbia University Medical Center for the last three years. I feel lucky to have had what I consider some of the best training in this country, an intern year at St. Vincent Hospital, PM&R residency at the Mayo Clinic, and a sports medicine fellowship at the University of Iowa. Over the years, I've gained incredible mentors and created a niche I'm truly passionate about. I also happen to be an immigrant. Even though it is a far cry from the sprawling lawns of my childhood Canadian town, New York City is the first place that's ever felt like home to me. I love this concrete jungle and I've made a life for myself here. So when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March, 2020, I immediately volunteered to be redeployed to my hospital's front lines. Why? Because I protect my home. Days in the ICU are still etched into my mind. The incessant beeping of ventilators, that sea of anxious eyes attached to otherwise unfamiliar masked faces, the sterile scent of disinfectant and my gloved hands yearning to touch the fingers of the patients I was charged with caring for. But I made the choice to make, move to the front line so that someone else wouldn't have to. I did it because I knew my chances of survival were better than my older colleagues. I did it because I trusted my medical training. I did it because I didn't know how not to help. Now some context for you. I have lived, trained, and worked in the US for the last 13 years. I've lived in six different states and transitioned between three different types of visas by the time I hit residency. Every time I moved for part of my training, my new hospital had to apply for a transition of my work permit. And every time, that cost my hospital money. Anytime my visa was in flux, I wasn't allowed to leave the country. If I did, I would give up my rights to my work visa and therefore lose my job. And as it turns out, the process of transitioning a work visa for a doctor is shockingly confusing. For example, during the second half of my fellowship, I was permitted to join one of my mentors, Dr. Maderic Hall, on a trip to Norway with the U.S. Nordic Combined Ski Team. However, I was also in the process of transitioning my H-1B visa from Iowa to Columbia. The flight and hotel room were booked, my bags were packed, and yet even up to a week before the trip, I still hadn't received approval to travel. Luckily, the permit arrived six days before the trip and I was able to meet the team in Oslo. And it was an incredible, incredible experience. After my flight back into the US, I passed through customs in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and then flew the rest of the way back to Iowa. I got through without any issue, or so I thought. However, two weeks later, I got an urgent email from Columbia's International Students and Scholars Office. Apparently, when they were verifying my immigration information on the United States website, I was listed as having come into the country from Norway on a K visa. That's a fiancé visa. Had I just Dennis rodman myself? Or had the customs officer decided he wanted a nice Canadian-Italian wife? In order to have the error corrected, I had to travel back to the USCIS airport office to explain that apparently the customs officer had entered my information in wrong and I needed to be adjusted back into H-1B status. It was corrected, but to this day, I still regret not taking a wedding photo first. You see, you can only spend um, so much time on a work visa before you have to either apply for permanent residency or leave the country. The H-1B Temporary Skilled Worker Visa is valid for up to six years. But when applying for an employment-based green card, you need to prove that you are an expert in your field. My issue was I'd only be working for one year as an attending by the time my work visa expired. See, the government doesn't take into account training time for physicians. So those initial five years of residency and fellowship ended up working against me when it came time to providing evidence of my expertise. So we sent in an application for an employment authorization document along with the intent to apply for permanent residency. Basically, that document would allow me to continue to work for a year while I got letters of support and awaited a decision on my green card. If at any time the application was denied, that EAD would become null and I would no longer be able to continue my employment. In November of 2019, my H-1B visa extension ran out while my EAD was pending still. So just like that, my employment had to be terminated and I took an unpaid leave of absence from my hospital. I couldn't travel, I had no income, and I had no indication of when the EAD might be approved. And when it finally came in four weeks later, I had to be rehired by Columbia. My green card application for permanent residency was submitted in June of 2019. 
It was over 700 pages long. I had letters of support from professional athletes I'd taken care of, from coaches, and from my medical colleagues. And per my lawyer, it was a very strong application. Yet, amidst the uncertainty that uh, came with the pandemic, the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services shut down. And on April 20th, a nationwide immigration ban was put into place. Eight days later, I received a notice that my green card application had been denied. After 13 years, I was being deported. The official reason for the immigration ban was to give Americans a chance to gain employment before citizens of other countries. But I hadn't stolen anyone's job. I was already working here during a pandemic, no less. So as any millennial would, I took to social media and apparently people heard me. After appearances on CNN, Fox 5 News and Toronto Radio, I received an outpouring of support, but I also received quite a bit of backlash. The comments section of these interviews had everything from marriage proposals to statements that I should just go back to Mexico. Eventually, my lawyer was able to get the initial portion of my national interest waiver um, reopened for supervisor review. A few weeks later, the decision was reversed and ultimately approved. Gratefully, that meant I could at least return to work to take care of my patients. But it still didn't mean I had a green card. It simply meant I could keep working while I continued to wait. Unfortunately, the borders remained closed, and in July, my incredible grandfather lost his battle with cancer. I hadn't been able to go home all year due to the limitations of my employment authorization, and now, thanks to COVID, I was, able to, I was unable to go home for my grandfather's funeral. Honestly, I fell into a bit of a depression. I missed my family. I was frustrated with this seemingly never ending pandemic and I was exhausted from this immigration fight. On August 27th, 2020, I was finally approved for my green card. After 13 years, numerous work visas, a pandemic, tens of thousands of dollars and nearly being deported, I can finally say I'm a permanent resident of the United States of America. Was it worth it? Sure. Should have been this difficult? Absolutely not. See, over 2 million immigrants work in the U.S. healthcare industry and approximately 25% of physicians here are foreign. Everyone here knows the pandemic isn't over. Cases have risen in other countries or other states likely due to reopening our restaurants, schools, stores, and churches. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the need to rebuild our economy, but with that will come a second wave and a second time healthcare workers both citizen and otherwise, will be asked to don those painful N95 masks, gowns, face shields, gloves, and goggles. I'm grateful that my case got the attention of the media, but what about my fellow medical immigrants? This is honestly not the time to refuse admission for essential healthcare workers. You see, over the years, this anti-immigration sentiment has focused on demonizing immigrants in an effort to seem pro-American. But immigrants and diversity is what makes America great. Most of us consider this our home, having driven stakes into the ground with our jobs, our lives, and our commitment to society. The immigration system in the U.S. is broken, and it is causing immigrant physicians to battle COVID in public while silently waging their own wars against an archaic system determined to break them. We love this country as much as you do, but we are exhausted from trying to prove that love. So yes, I can finally say that I am a green card holder. And for me, it might be the only good thing to come out of 2020. And I am beyond grateful for the support I received from many of you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Because I know my happy ending is not the story of all immigrant workers. Thank you.